So we're getting an absolute mountain of questions about ZBrush for iPad. So this particular video is gonna be about live Booleans, but I'm gonna start the video off by looking at where to find out what you can get in the free ZBrush for iPad versus the subscription. Because there's a lot of controversy about having to pay for a subscription, I just thought I'd show you where to check that out. So if you head over to the Maxon site, I'll put a link in the description down below and just search for, if you don't want to even bother doing that, go straight to search for ZBrush for iPad in Google and you'll get directly to this page that I'm on here. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, this is all about ZBrush for iPad. So it's got lots of the beta teams work in there. Go straight to the bottom and you'll see this here, which is your pricing options. And you've got ZBrush for iPad for free, ZBrush for iPad, which is the full subscription version. And then on the far right, you've got the full ZBrush. Now there is another one, ZBrush Core, but we, we won't discuss that. So you can get a good idea there of, if you literally work through um, each of these sections, you can see roughly what's in there. But to go even more specifically, so if you pop in at the bottom and say, see all the feature comparisons, then down here at the bottom, you're gonna get this table. And this gives you literally every single feature. And as you can see, ZBrush for iPad free, ZBrush for iPad subscription, the ZBrush core, the, the very limited one on the desktop, and then full ZBrush. Now, just so you know, if you already have ZBrush um, with your Maxon One license, you're gonna get ZBrush for iPad with that. That's already with your plan. But we're talking about the differences between ZBrush for iPad free and ZBrush for iPad subscription. And the one we wanna look at today, for example, is down here. So live Booleans, which are not Booleans, it says above it there, Boolean type operations with Dynamesh. And if you're a Nomad user, that'll be your voxel removal and vox, using you know voxels to, to do a removal. Where well, That's what we do with Dynamesh, and Dynamesh is well established before um, Nomad came along. But live Booleans is something I'm gonna show you in this video, and that isn't in Nomad. And, that, and this is one of the best tools in ZBrush for iPad for someone like me, and maybe like you, if you do things like um, doing uh, technical work or doing anything that's gonna to go to 3D printing, or if you want to make keys for um, you know, putting together um, printed models. ZBrush, um, Live Booleans were a game changer when they came out for me. They made things like doing face replacements for puppetry for shows like Pinocchio a breeze. It, you know, it's, it's a really, really cool tool. So I'm going to talk about that today. But as you can see now, if you want to know anything about what's in the ZBrush free one or the subscription one, then head over to this website and head over to this page and you can literally go through every single feature. Now, what it would be good is in the future, if I compare this list, to the Nomad features and give you an example of what you get in here compared to Nomad, which will be good for some people. So let's move on and have a look at how to use uh, live Booleans on the iPad. Okay, so let's take a look at what live Booleans are then. So I posted a little bit of this on social media this week and a lot of people from say the Nomad sculpting community are a little bit confused about um, Booleans and live Booleans. So I'm just gonna show you an example of what a live Boolean is. So I'm in the basic ZBrush um, starting page and you could at this point choose Z-spheres, primitives or 3D meshes. Well, Z-spheres we'll cover in another week. Primitives are a parametric object, so you can change them. We don't want that. We want to go straight for something we can sculpt on. So we're going to use this, the cube there. So I've now got a cube in the scene that I'm going to work on. I'm going to come here on the right hand side and I've got a cube um, new with UVs. I'm going to hold that down. I'm going to duplicate it. Come down to the bottom, use this gizmo here, scale it down and leave it intersecting between um, obviously an intersection you know, between the, the first object and the second one. I'm gonna to come to this side and change it to a color that we know, orange, fill that one. So we've now got orange and a white one. And just to check, you can see there are orange one and a white one. So you've now got two cubes. 
um, exactly the same. What we want to do is remove one from the other and leave it live. So it's very, very simple. So you hold this down, hold the, the, your finger down on the, on the actual Z tool, which is uh, Pixelogic Maxon's name for a, a model or an object. And then we want to go to Boolean process, hold down on that one. And then we want to go to subtraction. So I'll just do that again. I think I might have tapped the wrong one there. So I tapped intersection. So you've got three options, addition, subtraction, intersection, and you can make it start a group. But well, we, we were already at the start of a group with our first model. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So change it to subtraction. So now we've got a little icon change here. So we've got one cube, then something that will become the subtraction and then nothing else after it. So what we now need to do is see it as a, a live Boolean. And that's very, very simple. It's down here at the bottom. You just hit this last button and it removes it like that. Now, this is where it's a bit different for anyone who's coming from, for example, a Nomad sculpt uh, background. This for a ZBrusher is quite normal. And the big thing that makes it a, a, a big difference is that you can still move that around. So with the gizmo, you can move it along the different axes, you can scale along the axes, and you can see the cutting live. So this is something I, you know, this is a game changer for people um, doing production work where you need to do things like pegs for um, uh, 3D printed models, or if you want to do 3D printed faces, like I obviously, you know, I talk about this a, a little bit. This is Pinocchio from the Guillermo del Toro one. So the technical work done on this was we had to remove the, you know, certain parts internally were, you know, a huge amount of parts internally to make this mask fit on this head. And, that, you know, that is so much easier when you can move items around um, like with, with this process. Now, something to notice, um, if you go back up here and you copy that first one or duplicate it, we've now got another copy. So if I take the cutting cube and move it up one, so it's above that second cube, you've got the first cube, then the cutting tool, and then another cube. Well, that cube's not is is after the boolean so if i set if i scale that up now you can see that that is um not being affected by that cut if it was before that it would be cut just in the same way so that makes it even more useful so you can start building up a stack like that and there's also ability to do folders so you can do folders like so and you can throw these into the folders in in in, in groups uh, and that helps you, you know, control and manage all, all of this, this subtool stack. So if, for example, you're on um, the uh, cutting tool, you can now manipulate that while you're um, uh, in the live Boolean. So what do I mean by that? So you could take, for example, the clay build up tool and you could add clay. You could smooth down. You could use the move tool here or move topological or move and then just move the cutting tool around so i'm moving the orange one around but you're seeing it live and and th th this is a such a, a game changer i can't you know i i've stressed it a few times in this already so where that folder um idea is useful is if you've got those two things in a folder i've just dragged them in and then if you hold on the folder and say um boolean the folder it will boolean the whole thing. And from that point, you've got the finished object without any of the separate parts. So that basically finishes the project at that point. You end up with what you get with a voxel removal or a Dynamesh function, and it does give you the finished product like that. But that, that's basically at the end of it. So um, the, the bit that I really want to, to focus on is the live boolean. I really hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give us a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of stuff. And if you like it enough to give us a thumbs up, then please subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of stuff coming in this next few months, all about ZBrush, about Gravity Sketch, about uh, Nomad Sculpt, our favorite tool, and obviously a lot, lot more. So please stay tuned.